Welcome back to our video series on relay testing communication, which is based on a blog post on our website called How to Communicate with a Test Set or Relay. Be sure to check it out via the link in the description. This is the second video in the series, and we strongly recommend you watch the first video on serial communication first by following the link in the description. Ethernet communication is the future of protective relays, and every relay tester should know how to configure their TCP IP addresses. If that sounds like something that you've heard related to internet access, you are absolutely correct. As far as your laptop is concerned, there is no difference between communicating with the internet and relay testing equipment. And that's what makes this style of communication so painful. Your IT department is trying to protect you from all the bad people and bots on the internet, and this protection often interferes with communication between relay testing equipment. There are two types of ethernet cables, just like in serial communication, but everything in Ethernet communication travels in pairs instead of individual conductors. All of the pairs are connected to the same connector numbers in a straight-through cable, and pairs are crossed in a null modem arrangement. Straight cables are everywhere because they are the cables that connect your laptop to the office or hotel LAN when the Wi-Fi sucks. Null cables can only be purchased in a specialty store and are usually labeled hub-to-hub -hub cables, so make sure you have one in your toolkit before you need it because it can be difficult to find on short notice. However, most relay testing devices use straight-through cables. You may not need a special cable even if a null is required because some laptops will auto-switch to the configuration required by the system. This can make troubleshooting difficult as everything will be fine with an auto-switching laptop, and then somebody else comes with a regular laptop with the same cable and it won't be able to communicate. I carry a 25-foot Ethernet cable with me for direct communication, or I would use the little portable router shown between the fingers on the screen that was another cheap Amazon purchase for $22 that allows me to connect to devices wirelessly, or you might consider bringing a wireless router with you so you can connect to all of the devices at one time which will allow you to communicate to more than one device simultaneously, something you can't do with a serial connection. The steps for Ethernet connections are similar to serial connections. First, you start by making a connection between the two or more devices. Then you've got to decide who's going to run this show. Is your laptop going to be the reference, or is the device you're connecting to going to be the reference? All of the devices you want to communicate with have to have the same general address. Then you have to set up the TCP IP addresses for each device. An IP address has four numbers separated by periods. The first three numbers must be the same. You can think of it like the first number defines the country the device is in, the second one defines the state, and the third one defines the city. Your devices must be in the same country, in the same state, and in the same city, or else they will not be able to communicate. The fourth number defines the house number, and it must be unique for each device. If two devices have the same address, the information will not know which device to go to, and will just head back home. This is the most important part of Ethernet communication. Most people change their laptop because it's usually easier, however, your IT department must give you the correct permissions on your laptop to make it happen. I'll show you how to change the IP address in Windows 10, which is very similar to Windows 7. The first thing you must do is go to the Network and Sharing Center in the Control Panel. I usually go there by clicking the Start button and typing Network and Sharing Center and just selecting it from the search function. Once you're in Network and Sharing, you want to go to Change Adapter Settings and then you want to find the adapter that you're going to connect to. I can tell that I'm going to be using this one because it's the only one connected. The other two have big red X's on them showing me that they're not connected. If you're not sure which one is which, you can unplug the cable and you'll watch it change from connected like this one to an X like this one. Once you know you're on the right Ethernet adapter, you want to right click on it and select Properties. Then you want to select Internet Protocol version 4 and hit Properties again. And usually you'll see that the Obtain IP address automatically is selected. But if you don't see that and this other one is selected, which is Use the following IP address, you're going to want to write those numbers down 
because you're going to need that information if you want to talk to the hotel or the office internet connection when you leave the job site. Now, I want to communicate with devices that have the same country code of 192, and then they have the same state code of 168, and they have the same city code of 0, and the devices I want to talk to are 250 and 253, so I don't want to be either of those numbers for this last one, so I'm going to type 200, and then you want to click in subnet mask, and some numbers will automatically be populated. Subnet mask is not as important as the IP address, and usually you don't have to think about it at all. The gateway is only required if you're going to talk to the internet, which I'm not going to do, so I don't care about that. And the DNS server is only used when you're going to connect to the internet, so I don't care about that either. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK, and I'm going to hit Close. And now you can see it says Unidentified Network, which is usually what you see when you're connecting to another device. Now that you know how to set up the TCP IP settings, let's look at how you can troubleshoot when things go wrong. The easiest thing to do is to look at the ports that the cable is connected to. There should be lights flashing, indicating that information is being transmitted back and forth. If you don't see lights, either the port doesn't have lights, or the port is disabled, or you need to push the cable in more to seat it. The next thing you can do is go underneath the operating system and run an IP config command to see what your network settings actually are. Sometimes Windows tricks you into thinking that a change has been made when it really wasn't accepted, and you can't find that out unless you go into DOS mode. Start by opening up the command prompt, which is usually found under Windows Administration Tools, right here. I usually just search by hitting the Start button and type CMD for command, open up the command prompt, and then I type the command ipconfig. And you can see here it's telling me that my Ethernet adapter is set with 192.168.0200. And if I wanted even more information, I could type ipconfig slash all. And it'll give me everything that the computer knows about that specific device. I can also test the communication channel between devices by using the ping commands. So ping 192.168.0.250. And you can see that information is going out to the device and coming back, and it's taking less than 5 milliseconds each way. I can ping the other device as well and go ping 192.168.0.253, and information is going backwards and forwards. If there wasn't communication, I can go ping 192.168.0.251, and if you don't see something come back right away, you know that there's something wrong, and eventually it'll say something like destination host unreachable, which means that you do not have a physical connection between the two devices, or the addressing is wrong. Pinging isn't perfect, however, because it happens underneath the operating system. You could get a perfect ping, but your IT department can still block communication via Windows. The ideal solution is when the device you're communicating with has a built-in web server. You can test the connection by opening up any browser. I'll open Opera in my case, and I'll type in the IP address of the device I want to talk to, which is 192.168.0.250. And I'm connected to an MTS 5100, and it has a built-in web server, so I have something that makes sense for the device I'm trying to connect to. I'm also connected to an ABB relay, and ABB has told me that some of their relays do have built-in web browsers, so if I type in 192.168.0.253, if I see something that says ABB, then I would know that I'd be able to communicate with any Windows program if I saw that come up. This relay must not have that internal browser inside of it. If you set everything up properly and you still can't communicate, the first place to look for problems is with your corporate VPN. Make sure it is disabled because your VPN will try and shunt the information you want to go to the device through your office, and that usually isn't going to work. If you were communicating for a while and it suddenly stops, that's usually a VPN kicking on and blocking communication. You theoretically should be able to communicate with the internet via Wi-Fi while simultaneously communicating with a device through another Ethernet port, but this configuration often causes problems. Sometimes your device Ethernet data tries to go through the Wi-Fi and vice versa. If you're still having problems and you know your VPN isn't the cause, try disabling all the other Ethernet communication except for the port that you need.
Also remember that the Ethernet communication is the Internet as far as your computer is concerned, so your antivirus and or firewall may be blocking communications as well. Make sure you are not connected to the Internet first, and then disable both to see if that helps. Your IT department may have set up a proxy server that is redirecting all communication through a specific address. You can check this by going to your Start menu and searching for Internet Options. Once Internet Options is open, you want to go to Connections, and then you want to go to LAN Settings, and you want to make sure that this Automatically Detect Settings is checked. If you have something else checked here or in the proxy server, then that means every single internet connection that you try and make is going to go through that other address first, and if you're not connected to your office, that ain't going to work either. So if you see anything in here, again, write it down because you're going to need that information later, and then just uncheck everything except for automatically detect settings, and then that should help troubleshoot as well. If you're still having problems, try doing all of the above and rebooting your computer, and then check it all again when it reboots. Sometimes your computer needs a kick in the butt to save the settings. Remember that you probably changed the settings for how you connect to the internet when you changed your ethernet configuration. If you can't talk to the internet when you get back to the office or hotel, check your ethernet and DNS settings. If you don't want to keep switching back and forth, you could try and set up an alternate configuration by going back to the network and sharing center, and then going back to adapter settings, and right-clicking on the ethernet, going properties, TCP IP version 4, Properties. Make sure you check Obtain an IP address automatically. And it's very important, you will not be able to talk to any page on the internet unless you click the Obtain DNS server address automatically, unless you have Google's DNS addressing in there to make your internet browsing faster. But you can go to this alternate configuration, and you can type in the IP address of your test set or all of your test sets if they all have the same IP address. And what will happen is you'll connect to that device. Your laptop will wait a minute or two for the device to give it an address. Once your laptop does not get an IP address from the device, it'll default to this address, and you'll be able to communicate with the relay or test set and do whatever you need to do. And then when you go back to the office, your office will give it an IP address, and then everything will be normal that way as well. A lot of times your IT department lets you set this up, but they don't actually let it get implemented, so you'll have to play with this on your laptop to see whether or not it's going to work. If you happen to see that this unidentified network turns on and off, on and off, on and off, it could be that your laptop is so new, it can't communicate with the older communication protocols in the device you're trying to talk to. And you can change the speed of this by going to Properties, Configure, Advanced, and look for something that usually says speed and duplex. And if it says auto negotiation and you click down and you can see gigabits, that is a really modern laptop compared to how Relay and test set technology operates. So you may want to slow it down to 10 megabits per second to communicate with those other devices. In this case, I don't have to, so I'm just going to select auto negotiation. Thanks for watching this video. You can get more detailed information by following the links in the description along with a cheat sheet that summarizes everything we've discussed here on one page when you sign up for our mailing list. You can watch real-world examples of how to connect to different test sets and relays in our How to Test Protective Relays online seminar that demonstrates everything I know about generic relay testing. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, whatever, to help Google think that we're great. We won't be able to continue offering free content without your support. In the end, don't forget to have fun out there. Have a great day.